Today we are in the fourth video of this series of the road to FPGA. We have seen what are logic gates, how to use Verilog and how to program an FPGA, but we only made a simple blink code. Today we will make something a little bit more difficult. We will implement a ward communication in FPGA. With today's video you will learn how the ward communication works, how to implement ward reception in Verilog, how to implement ward transmission in Verilog. You will also learn how a state machine works and finally how to merge everything in the top file. For this example I will use this Bluetooth module that has a ward port and send the data from my smartphone. Then we will receive the ward data with our FPGA. Before we start, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell in order to see my future videos. Also thanks to all my Patreons. So guys, let's get started. This project is sponsored by GLC PCB. They are a professional PCB manufacturer from China with more than 10 years of experience. I can easily say that their services are the perfect solution for cheap and fast prototyping and for quantities from 5 up to 15,000 boards. For small boards you should try the panel by GLC PCB service and put more boards on the same 10 by 10 cm PCB and by that have even more boards for only $2. What's up my friends, welcome back. First thing we have to see is how a WART signal is. Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter or for short WART is a serial communication so the data bits are sent one after the other. It is also asynchronous so we don't have a clock. So with just one pin we can send the data and with two we can send and receive and we don't need anything else. Here I connected the WART Bluetooth module and hook the oscilloscope to the RX pin so we could see how the signal is. I now connect my smartphone to the module and I will send a number. Here we have the signal. As you can see the signal is always high and it will only be low when we receive data. So it is very easy to detect the start bit. Anytime we detect a falling edge we start receiving data. But when do we get the first bit? How do we know when to start counting bits? For that we must know the baud rate of the communication and also the amount of bits that we send. Usually we send 8 bits, but it could be any other amount. As for the baud rate it could be any value, but usually there are values such as 4800, 9600, 115200 bouts per second and so on. In case of this Bluetooth module it is 9600. So that means that the width of the bit should be around 104 microseconds. Ok, but in order to avoid errors, here is what we are going to do. We will create a tick pulse. The frequency of this pulse will be 16 times faster than the war data. We want to read the bit value exactly when we are in the middle of the bit, so in that way we will avoid errors. If we read the value close to the falling or the rising edge, there might be a small oscillation and we could get the wrong value. So we detect the start bit and we count 8 ticks. So now we should be in the middle of the start bit. Then we count 16 ticks more and now we save the data for the first bit. We count 16 more and now we are into the second bit and so on till we get the last bit. Finally we count 16 ticks more and we read the stop bit which should be high. And now we have the entire received byte. To send the data we do the same but in the opposite direction. When we reach 16 ticks pulses we set the TX pin to high or low depending on the bit value that we are about to send. Seems pretty easy right? But now let's see that in Verilog. Let's start with the RX code. I first define my module as ward RX. As inputs I will have the clock signal, a tick pulse input and the RX pin input. We have a few more extra signals for configuration but those are not mandatory such as RX enable, reset, number of bits and an output that will notify when the receive process is done. I define the RX data as an 8 bit output and this will have the final receive value. Now I create a few registers that will be used later in the code and we will see why. 
we will make a so-called state machine. We have the Moore or the Millie type of state machines, but that is for a future video. Now first thing first in Verilog code you should set a reset always. Each time the reset signal is low we set the state of our state machine to the initial state which is idle. Now we create a state change always. Each time one of these registers will change their values we decide the next state of our state machine. If we are into idle and the RX enable is high we get into the read state. If we are into the read state and RX done is high we go back into idle and wait for the next data. Next part of the code is to tell each state what it will do. The read state will activate the read process and the idle will deactivate that process. Finally with each tick pulse we run this always and we start a counter. When we reach 8 with that counter that means that we are in the middle of the start bit. Now each time we get the counter to 16 we save the input bit value into the read data register by shifting the RX input. We do this 8 times till we get to the last bit. If the actual bit is equal to the amount of bits we get to the stop bit and we are done. Finally all is there to do is to assign the read data register to the RX data output and those will be our 8 bits of received data. Please read all the comments in this code for more. Ok guys now let's see the TX code. As before we define the inputs and outputs of our module. Let's keep the state decision blocks since those are almost the same as the RX code. But once again at each tick pulse we start counting. When we start we set the TX output to low or zero and that will create the start bit since as you remember that will be a low pulse. Now we count up to 16 and set the TX pin to the value of the first bin of the data that we want to send. We do this for 8 bits and we are done. Now we wait for the next data to be sent. Please once again read all the comments in this code to understand more but the state machine is pretty basic. It gets the new data to be sent, counts up to 16 and change the value of the TX output according to the bits to be sent. Pretty easy right? Ok the next module is called baud rate generator. As you have seen in the RX and TX modules we have the ticks input. But where are those ticks come from? Well we create those depending on the used baud rate. In case of this bluetooth module it is 9600 bouts per second. This module will have a clock and a baud rate value input. And it will create the ticks as output. This is very short. All it does is to count up to the baud rate divided by 16 and that it will create a tick pulse. And this tick pulse will go to the RX and TX modules. Ok finally pay attention. To get the full wart module we have to merge all these 3 files together. For that we will create a file called tap.v. This will be our wart module. Let's see a more graphic version of this. Ok so imagine this will be our top module. It has the inputs and the outputs. In this case it has a clock input which will be 15 MHz from the FPGA board. A reset which will be a push button, the RX and TX pins and the 8 bit of RX data output which will be 8 LEDs in order to show the binary value. Inside of this top module we now have the RX, the TX and the baud rate generator modules connected with the outputs and inputs using wires. In this way at the same time we can get all of these to work. That's what the top file will do. We create the module and define the inputs and outputs. Now I create a few wires to join the inputs and the outputs from the small modules to the top inputs and outputs. We set the RX and TX to be always enabled. We also set the baud rate to 325 and you probably wonder why is that? Well because we want 16 ticks with a frequency of 16 times 1 divided by 9600. But at a frequency of 15 MHz in order to count 16 ticks we need to count up to 325 clock pulses. And that's why we use 325. Finally with these definitions we make the connections between the RX, the TX and the baud rate generator with the top inputs and outputs. And that's it. I now get my FPGA and I open a project in Quartus just as in the past tutorial. 
I import four files and create the synthesis, and upload that to the board. Now I connect the Bluetooth module to pins 114 and 119, since those were defined in the pin planner. Now I've created this app that would send numbers with Bluetooth. You could download it from below. I now connect to the HC06 Bluetooth module. Now as you can see, each time I send a number, I get the binary value on the LEDs. Since I have 8 LEDs, I could send up to 255. So guys, there you have it. I hope that you now know how wired communication works and how to implement that in Verilog. You have all the files below. The codes for the RX, the TX and BAU generator and also the TAP and the Quartus project as well. Read all the comments for more details step by step in the code. I hope that you liked this video and if so don't forget to subscribe and activate the notification bell in order to see my future videos. Also click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. And remember, if you consider helping my projects check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.